First off, thank you to Sammy111, PBGCEA8479, IF, Lucky Charms, W. Cowley, Verona Roops, Mad Mad Madeline, and Siege for leaving reviews and your overall support of the podcast. May any eyes you see at the edge of your headlights at night stay placated. From now until the end of part one, if you rate and or review us on your preferred podcatcher and DM or email us a screenshot, you will receive a shout-out just like this one on the next episode. But for now, on to the story. Going Nowhere Episode 11 and 12 The Church and the Steeple Listeners, what you have today is a very special episode of the Going Nowhere podcast. The Nowhere Historical Society suggested that I do a more appropriate focus piece Wait, on the no, Grayson fuck, family. So tonight, we're headed into St. Gemma's Cemetery, Spooky lad. their mausoleum, which is open to the public when it's not after 5 p.m., and investigating the Euro hauntings that surround the area. If all goes as planned, we may be able to contact the spirit of Arthur Grayson himself. Investigation, LLC? <laughs> <laughs> What? It's like Mystery Inc., but, you know, copyright free. <laughs> Quit joking around. We're here for the spooks, and you're both doing a horrible job at helping me carry the equipment. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm already carrying quite a bit of stuff on me, Meg. And when you say here, I'm assuming you mean... We'll be at the edge of the creek in a few minutes. Everyone brought waterproof shoes, yes? Uh, why don't you hand the recorder to Scotty, at least? You move your hands a lot when you talk, and I'm afraid you're going to end up dropping it in the water. Hell no! He'd drop it for sure. At least I have a 50-50 chance. I would not. See, you'd say that, and then I'd hand it to you, and then you'd promptly drop it. Absolutely not. Like I said, I'm a professional. Hey, Meg, focus on directions. We can bully Scotty later. Hey. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I know. All right, um... Two park benches down. There's a tulip tree, and then we should be able to see from... Here we go. Ugh, this is gonna suck. Well, there was a reason this section of the fence was low enough to climb. They have a natural barrier. Ladies first. I'll spot you in case there's any issues. Of, uh, of course. I. Uh, thank you. Uh, Meg, you're not moving. Right, right. Uh, let's, let's go. Let's move. You know, vamoose, uh, rock and roll, buckaroos. Meg, get in the damn creek. <laughs> damn creek. <laughs> Oh, God, my socks are all wet. Oh, I hate this so much. All of our socks are wet, Scotty. Can we please just get this over with? You're making it worse for yourself by complaining. Really? Because I feel a hell of a lot better complaining now than if I just stewed in my own misery. You do know the creek isn't even that wide. Yeah, yeah, whatever. All better. Uh. Then top time. Uh, let me just. It's not too bad. 
No turning back now, guys. Let's go. Hmm. Smells like freshly cut grass and damp earth. Expected it to smell, um, spookier? What do you want it to smell like? Corpses? Hey, pay your respects. You pay your respects. <laughs> wow. Never knew we'd change from a historical podcast to two clowns and a microphone. Shouldn't we maybe, you know, get set up? Slow your roll, Ellie. Let Meg stop and smell the roses left for our dearly departed. Is this really a good idea, guys? I thought you'd be all for it. The Arthur Grayson haunting is sort of an obsession of yours. Oh, is that really all you think of me, Meg? I'm shocked, you know. Maybe after all the talk of cults and murderous woods, I need a break. I'm a multi-dimensional character, goddammit. I have layers, a heart, wants, oh, needs. Jesus Christ. If he's going to keep talking, just shut the recorder off now. On it. Honestly, Meg, how long have we been friends? Like... A year. I can't believe it. Hey, I'm trying to give you some space right now, but I didn't really understand your last text. Meg, I'd really appreciate it if you could call me back and maybe we could talk. Um, well, if you get arrested, you know where to reach me. Oh, also, your mum wanted to know why you weren't at home. So, I told her you decided to stay at your dad's for the weekend, and then I told him you were staying at your mom's, and, uh, well, they didn't really ask for any follow-up. Please don't die. I don't want to have to explain that, because it's a terrible alibi if I'm ever questioned about it. I wish we had gotten to walk through the gate. It's locked, of course. But more than anything else, that gate symbolizes the purpose of this place. The final resting spot of our dearly departed. And a symbolic gateway from this life to... Whatever you think comes next. St. Gemma's Cemetery was a late addition to the St. Gemma's Baptist Church, established at the beginning of the 19th century. During that time, it was infamously taken care of by a reverend named Oscar Dobon, who was later exposed for attending seances. Any sort of spiritualist activities like that were not taken kindly by the rest of his parish. See, the rise of spiritualism came when people turned to organize religion and found themselves lacking a personal connection with faith as they grew more concerned for the concept of death as a whole, they sought out spirits of their deceased beloved. They believed a veil could be parted between worlds and allow them to communicate. Except ghosts don't really communicate back. The ghosts aren't just going to magically appear when it gets dark, Scotty. Wait, didn't you do something like this? No, I haven't. This isn't really my jam, guys. I run a true crime blog, not a ghost hunting blog. We've seen footage of the Arthur Grayson hauntings and there's always concrete stuff. Muddy footprints, footsteps, weird noises. I don't ask for much, but no. I've been walking around here with cold coffee, a crumbly nature valley bar, and you guys since the sunset over an hour ago. This is taking a lot more time than I'd like it to. You're absolutely full of it, I hope you know that. Oh, yeah, I am. Too bad I'm one of three people in all of nowhere that doesn't have their head up their ass. Now pass me the flashlight. I'm going to take a look around. If I don't find anything, I'm personally marching to Old Archie's grave and demanding back the time I've lost here. Keep your hair on. We've still got some time before this ends up a hopeless endeavor. Just let me at least do another EMF sweep. I don't know if the issue is necessarily that nothing is happening. It's that nothing is happening here. I mean, the majority of the ghost sightings happened around the Grayson family mausoleum. And how do you suggest we remedy this? Well... 
We, no, no, no. We, we don't can't. have to disturb anything. In fact, we shouldn't disturb anything. We just go in, run the equipment, get out. Meg? But no. No, absolutely not. It, look, it's one thing to come here and use the graveyard for our own purposes, which, you know, I didn't exactly like in the first place, but I figured, oh, it's fine, as long as we don't do exactly what you're proposing. You've already come this far. You, you've already agreed to help me. We can't just leave empty-handed, and I'm not exactly saying we do anything insane. You just don't understand. That's it. That's it. You just don't get it. What I'm doing isn't wrong. How the fuck could you think that? Meg, you can't open a mausoleum without disturbing it. We aren't going to touch anything. We are not going to be disrespectful to this person's place of rest. Got it? God! Oh, Meg! Get back here! Are you just gonna sit on your hands or are you actually gonna help me go get her? This feels wrong oh, to like Meg. this. Meg, stop! Hey Meg, sorry to bother you again. I've, uh, there's no easy way to describe it. It feels like I swallowed a big old lead ball and it's sitting in my stomach weighing me down and it won't go away no matter what I do. What's going on down your end of the phone? You're probably just sitting with Ellie, two of you talking about some musty smelling papers or something. It's stupid of me to worry. I'm sorry. I know you're doing fine. <sighs> oh, damn, she's fast. <clears throat> uh, to be fair, you're way shorter than her. You didn't have a fair chance. Oh yeah? And what exactly were you doing to help? I... I was holding the equipment. Oh, who cares about the equipment? We've got a dumbass on the loose who might just do some light vandalism and we're trespassing in a graveyard and we need to be out of here before the undertaker comes in for the rounds. You really care about her, huh? She's my friend. I mean, I'm your friend too. I know! Now's not the time to talk about it though. Now's the time to walk and hope we can get to the mausoleum before she does. Without her guiding us. Yes, Scotty. Without her guiding us. Thank you for reminding me. We could just leave. Could we? I... Uh, I don't really know. <sighs> me neither. But... I mean... It's just Meg, and I love her to death, sure, but th this isn't smart, right? Now, I'm not being crazy. We are doing something dangerous. Someone could find us. I really, really don't want to deal with the cops right now. And what are we doing this for? You know how she is, Ellie. What if we can't stop her? Are we just going to go down with her? We have to at least try. If she... There we go. Phone recording. Sorry, Artie. Diet Dr. Pepper in a souvenir cup will just have to do for now. From the world at threadbare end and to the light I bring the dark 
sweep upon the shores of Nor and smote the fog that veils us through to clean and clear and crystallized to all the things that numb began. I open up the door to door and steal from you that silent rest. Not that. I know you wouldn't do anything stupid. You're almost 20, but you're responsible. Mostly. I know you wouldn't do something as stupid as conduct a seance in a graveyard. I mean, I can't find any other explanation as to why my candles are suddenly gone, but I know, no, I'd like to believe, in my heart, that I did not let you get that goddamn stupid. Meg, call me back. Not that either. <laughs> I think I hear talking. Young lady, why exactly are you here this... I see. Y'all thought y'all could break in here and film your little show and it would be just fine. Now, would it? Hi, Mayor Grayson. Nice flowers. Are, are those, uh, petunias? Uh, can we help, Mr. Grayson? Well, for one, I'd like you to get out of my family's mausoleum. I know why y'all came around here to do your little podcast, and you want to look at Arthur Grayson's grave. Well, there it is. Your cohort here was resting some melting candles in a souvenir cup full of some kind of liquor on it. And over there is Edgar Grayson, his son. And there's Nathaniel Grayson and Angela Grayson, Alexandra Grayson, my mother, who died very unfortunately in a car accident 15 years ago to the date. We know, Mr. Grayson, and we're very sorry for her behavior. We'll get her up and be on our way right now. Meg, get up. Actually, I'd like to stay. Meg, her up, Bliss! Excuse me, young lady? Personally, I'd like to go home. I... I'm not... done here. Oh, I think you are. Meg, what the hell does that mean? Uh, that's... Scotty! <laughs> What did you do that for? The kid's saying nonsense when I got here. It didn't mean anything. She can't. You can't. Oh, shit. Did I do that? Do what exactly is the question? Can you just get off the floor and help me try to move it? But that's not... <laughs> Which one of them do you want? Oh, it's not gonna open. It's an old stone door. It, it probably needs more work. Oh, God, what did I do? Oh, I hope I locked the museum before we left. All right. And then... Meg, I'm outside the museum. Could you get Ellie or someone to let me in? Is there even anyone in there? Is it even worth trying the door? Well, I mean, it's unlocked. Meg? Ellie? Jesus, it's dusty in here. Did they just spend all their time stealing glances over letters someone found in Grandma's trunk from the attic? Meg? It's Charlie. Oh, that's stupid. She knows it too. Okay, it's dead silent, so I'm going to assume they're not here. Hello? What the hell, man? Meg, if this is you, I'm going to kill you! God damn it. Oh god, oh god, oh my god.
Oh my God. Don't be a baby and push. <clears throat> Don't call me a baby. It's demeaning. I, I mean, to be fair, we should all be stronger than this. Three of us pushing and we can't even get one door open. Exactly. Yeah. If we all shove in the same spot at the same time, the door should move. Meg, you took remedial physics. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? Hey, I Kids. paid attention in that remedial physics course. Oh, for the love of God, will you two stop fighting? Kids! That's not going to work on whatever's out there. I can tell you that. What was that? I don't know. But I don't like it. I'm telling you, that door is not going to open. And there's no way in hell you're going to be able to stop it if you can open that door. Let's shove on three. One. Two. Three. You're not doing anything wrong. <laughs> Meg, what have you gotten us into? We need to keep walking. I feel like we should have stayed in the mausoleum. I know that we might not have been able to get back out, but it would have been safer than whatever this is. Not a what, but an it. There is something in nowhere. Now there's something next to nowhere. Something not in nowhere. Not. A not of it all. Where is it? Awfully quiet, Mayor. Penny for your thoughts? Well, I'm trying to process what exactly I'm seeing right now. It wouldn't be so bad if we knew what we were walking towards. So it doesn't feel like this is just nothing forever. She has to be somewhere. Shit. Feels like we've been walking for an hour. Shouldn't we be reaching the town? Something? It's just stupid, stupid corn for miles and miles, except for this one narrow path that hasn't forked hasn't changed course, hasn't done anything in hours. It feels like hours that we've been walking. Before there was us, before there was work and progress and houses and people, there were the fields. It always comes back to the fields. In the fields you are so small, so dizzyingly small in the wave of green, gold, and brown. Walk. Keep walking. You'll never find the way out. There is only endless maze. Have you ever seen a day when the fields weren't ripe with corn? When kernels did not litter the ground, the harvest ready for picking. Was there ever a day you didn't toil at one task or another, harvesting what must be taken? Thoughts clipped from your mind before they can ever fully form. Will this amount to nothing? Did it feel for a moment like you were there on the ground with the kernels? only to see the sole of a shoe above you before it stamps down on your head. What will it all come to? <laughs> oh, Meg, something just grabbed the back of my shirt. We will have to deal with what it all means. It can no longer be ignored. It will no longer be ignored. Could you ever remember a time when you weren't on the ground with the corn? 
a time when you didn't feel simultaneously crushed by the lack of choice, nowhere to go, nowhere to run to, with the overwhelming urge to flee it all, to leave your life, to dash it all, to say goodbye to the ones you love, and just... run. And crushed by the overwhelming nothing that surrounds you. There should be nothing, at least. Sometimes the worst part of being alone is when we are suddenly not. <laughs> Meg, something has my arm. Which means there's something here. Shake it off. <laughs> Don't let it pull you into the corn. Walk. Keep walking. Closer. I told you. It'll let us go when it gets what it wants. <sighs> what the hell does it want? Unfortunately. I think we're looking at it. Oh no, yeah, clearly she's batshit insane right now, but what does that mean? Damn it, just say something that's not vaguely worded nonsense. I'm trying to tell you all I can, but there are certain things that keep me from telling all of it to you. Bull! Cutting through the cornfields. If you can't find the path out, make the path. She told me. All right, qu quit it. If he's not going to be any help, then he's not going to be any help. Yelling at him isn't going to get us anywhere. Oh, did we really just lose Meg? Again? Oh, my God. I can't believe this. Meg? Meg? Where are you? Wait, wait a minute. Charlie? Meg? Please, tell me you can hear me. You've got to get out of here. Charlie! Charlie, I'm here! Damn it, Meg! Meg! Where are you? What? I promise, I promise I am not the thing in the corn. It threw me for a loop, too. I kept hearing you screaming, and I... Jesus, I couldn't tell if it was real or not. But it didn't sound like you... It sounded more like an animal. Meg, please just let me know you're okay. I, I just want to know you're okay. I need to know you're safe. Charlie, what are you talking about? I'm right here. Or maybe you don't even want to see me. Maybe you'd rather die than talk to me again. Hey, no? Wait, am I dead? I saw you run into the cornfield. I left the museum and the sky was all wrong. My first thought, I'll be honest, was to go back to the museum and hunker down. And my second thought was, no, if Ellie and Meg aren't in the museum, then they are somewhere committing some crime or something. God, I really wish your parents gave a shit about you so I didn't have to constantly make sure you weren't somewhere getting arrested. I don't know why I said that. Is there a way out? I haven't found one yet. I don't think you have either. Maybe I can just... What the hell? If you die... God, does that mean it was my fault? I I'm only 22. I shouldn't have been expected to be the weird pseudo-guardian of someone only three years younger than me. Charlie, I'm still... Fuck. Let go. And Jesus, sometimes I wish I'd done better. But I was parenting myself as well. And when I saw you didn't have that, when Aunt Audrey and Uncle James brought you over and left you to fend for yourself, I said to myself, I said, Hey, Charlie, if you never had anyone to be there for you, maybe you can be there for your baby cousin. I didn't always want to do it either. 
You're an absolute ass sometimes, but it's been so long that we've known each other that I... I don't really know how to see you as anything but my little sister. You've never seen me as Charlie Lyle, though. I think it would have helped you more if I had just been your friend, your cousin, Charlie Lyle. But I guess it's because I've been your shoulder to cry on, to vent on, to be there for you and teach you how to do Wicca, even if you didn't always believe me, to teach you how to rebel and find yourself, that you'll never see me as anything but Charlie, your older sister. You've never seen me as me, Meg. It's difficult to, to really know myself. What happens when I don't know you anymore? Not like how you don't know me, but when you're unrecognizable. When I look at what was once my baby cousin and see a stranger's face staring back at me, who hates me, who is so far from the familiar and the known that it scares me. But you scare me. <laughs> Charlie, can you see me? Who are you? Charlie, what are you talking about? I I'm talking about. We know. Who are you? We know. Who are you? We know. Who are never wanted me, did it? Of course, immediately call her parents. I'm sure they'll be eager to hear that she's safe. Oh, Meg, do you mind turning off that recorder? For legal reasons, of course. Yeah, sorry. I forget that some people don't like the recorder at all. Like who? You know, people. Right. Well, you seem a bit confused. It's a good thing I found you kids. Oh, crap. Sorry. That's right. Where, where's Scotty and Allie? Are they okay? Your friends aren't here anymore, Meg. What? We sent them home. You seem to be the only one that sustained significant injuries. Now... I've kept the nice police off of you for a while. So would you like to tell me what you all were doing in the cornfield this late? We were... I... don't... actually remember? When I woke up, I... I... I kept... hearing... music? Or... <sighs> That would be the head trauma. Unfortunately, we don't keep up the area as much as we used to. And you took a bit of a tumble down a ravine after tripping on tree root. Your friends Scotty and Ellis? Ellie? Uh, their, their name is Ellie. Right. They were attempting to reach you. Obviously trying to save you from your own stupid decision. But even when they were pressed to cooperate, their story's coherence was shaky at best. Uh, I, I, um, I really don't know what to say. Uh, you have to believe me, I, I genuinely don't know what happened. Sorry for causing you any distress, Miss Bliss. I do hope that this experience helps you reflect on some of your past behaviors. And Take my best to your parents. Oh, um... Uh, of course. I'm... Sorry for any pain I caused. Charlie! Charlie! If I... If I keep running, I'll find her. If I just keep running, I'll find her. I just, I get, I keep, I keep seeing her on the edge of my vision, barely on the horizon line, and I...
I... I can't... I... I can't catch up! I... I'm... I'm alone. Why... why... am I... alone? I... shouldn't... I shouldn't... Why was I running? Going Nowhere is a weekly mystery podcast produced by the Nowhere radio station. In this episode, Scotty Walker was played by Aaron Ray, at Aaron Ray VO on Twitter. Ellie Novak was played by Elizabeth Plant. Charlie Lyle was played by Rose K. Morgan, at Rose K. Morgan on Twitter. Mayor Grayson was played by David Cook. If you'd like to support Going Nowhere, subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes or whatever player you use for podcasts. This is an independent production with no budget for marketing, and your support helps get these stories out to more people. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Nowhere Radio. Visit our Twitter for a link to our Discord community. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.